Oof, my, my mic right, right in front of my, my mouth. mouth. All right. All right. Good. good. Yeah. yeah. Okay, right. Good, good, good. Uh, all right. Video. There we go. All right, cool. Hi. What's up? What's up? How you doing? Good. Already recording. Okay. Um. Yeah, my settings need to... One second. Take your time. Take your time. I'm trying to think what my desktop audio is. Audio two. One has to be cable. I think the other one has to be input. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. It should be working now. Okay. All right. So how's it been? It's been a week. It's been good. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, I mean, nothing really super notable happened. I hit a new benchmark on my weight loss journey. I got to 185. I feel Solid. much better. Thank you. Yeah, I had a pretty crazy weekend. I ate a lot, but I'm glad I got it down. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, I feel good. Otherwise, I'm going to see the movie Dumb Money tonight. Oh, uh, uh, with with um, Paul Dano and Seth Rogen. <laughs> yeah, <man. laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, popular voice of Donkey Kong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. That'll be cool. Um, and then you know, just gonna have dinner. It's gonna be fun. All uh, right. Folks are gonna be away for a couple days, so nice. So home nice alone. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're going to All Venice right. actually. Yeah. And the difference. Yeah. Well, welcome really nice. back to the podcast. We're back for another week of fun roundup. Um. So yeah, you're saying you're gonna see the money tonight. Yeah. Are you going to go see uh, Five Nights at Freddy's? Uh, if someone asks me, to, I'll do it. Because uh, here's the thing. like own, It, it comes know. on streaming the same day. So I don't know if you want to watch it over Discord together. Sure. I'd you want to do that? that yeah. All right. It'll be fun. Yeah, bet. Uh, but other than that, like there, there's not a lot of new movies coming out. Because I know the Five Nights at Freddy's, that one was supposed to come out like in, what, 2020? But it was went... It? It's something like that. It would uh, first went through production hell just because people just kept dropping the project because I think directors just were like, I don't want to deal with this anymore, and they just left. Mm -hmm. And then COVID hit, so that delayed it even further. So yeah, I'm pretty sure that movie was supposed to come out a couple years ago, but it didn't. So the uh, the directors left because it was just, just uh, yeah, they probably, probably just wasn't wasn't happy. Let me double check that fact though. Um, let's see. For those of you who are watching this and wondering if I'm in heaven right now because of the uh, uh, window behind me, I am not. I am still uh, currently alive. Just want to make that a little clear. I know this oh, could be so, very... Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, that's a Seth I'm Rogen laugh. That was a Seth Rogen laugh right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so according to this guy on Reddit, so I'll take this as a side of salt, the movie's been announced since 2015 in April, but... And this was supposed in 2019, uh, 2018, and then it's been nearly three years of development, absolutely nothing to show for it. So mm. it really doesn't. It, it, yeah, it was supposed to like, I think, come out like by twenty twenty, and just people just kept dropping off the production because they just weren't happy with it. Because July twenty eighth, twenty fifteen, Gail Keenan was announced as director, and then uh, Scott Cawthon posted an update like two years later about the movie, and there's a couple of roadblocks with the film industry and uh, as a whole, and then they, uh, yeah, so 2017, the rights were dropped by uh, Warner Brothers, and Blumhouse picked it up. That was also another big one that probably made it, because all that footage they already shot and stuff like that, um, they couldn't use or anything like that, so they would have to rehire and reboard everything at that point. So, yeah, it probably wasn't the strongest start to this movie, but it looks good. It's as good as I would imagine it would look like for a Five Nights at Freddy's movie. I mean, I haven't kept up with the franchise since... What was the one where you had to go through the vents? Uh, and yeah, there was that's like a little three... One. No, it's yeah. probably four. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I don't follow the stuff. I was just like, 
like people around me, like they have kids and they're like, oh, what do you think about the Five Nights at Freddy's stuff like that? I was like, I, I was kind of too old for that at that point when I was, you know, my age. You know, because yeah. when that came out, like maybe freshman year high school for us, I think. Yeah. So we so. were like edgy teens, but like we weren't dumb edgy teens at that point, you know? We we already had our new yeah. grounds phase and we we're just kind of like, yeah, this is our humor for the next uh four years. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Now it's now it's Riz and other shit. It's that Riz I and yeah. Did yeah, I so the much. other day um we ran a story in inside uh our watch trending section in our news uh cast. So there were added new dictionary words and like one of them was Riz. Another one was Padawan, which I was like, okay, that's interesting. It wasn't added before, but like, yeah, mm. Riz and like girl boss. And I'm like, mm, I just saw a bunch of slang terms that you're just becoming the urban dictionary right now. You know, it's mm -hmm. like at this yeah, point, yeah. the Merriam-Webster dictionary should just buy out urban dictionary no matter what. Just buy it. Just buy it and just, <laughs> just update it that. there. You know? Yeah, right. Because like I that part. Yeah, I expect the Merriam-Webster dictionary to be serious, you know? <laughs> I expect to learn yeah, my spellings. Right. Like, actually, you know, not like weird slang terms, but more so, um, you know, actual gen <laughs> English yeah. words. <laughs> it's it's like, if, it's okay yeah. if, like, you do, like, the whole entire, like, bullet point, caveat, shortened form, riz for charisma, you know, where it's like, okay, here's, like, the little thing. I don't think it needs a full definition. Yeah, it's... Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. just a, a sh offshoot of the actual word charisma. So yeah, exactly. Doesn't really need doesn't need that. You know. Yeah, but, but well, I think um, we're just bitching and complaining by that at that point. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. It's really at the end of the day, I, I could care less. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, um. But what else? That's the right word. Uh, I feel I watched, kind of. Uh, oh yeah. What, what, there sorry, you go. Yeah, you're watching. Oh no. Well, uh, in. On my, uh, as always, like I occasionally like run out of things to watch, so I'll yeah. just go and watch an old show from my childhood. Yeah, I was watching uh, Transformers Prime. If we're talking about like old, if we're talking about old, <sighs> which series, one was Prime? Back. It was the one with uh, it was on the one on the sh uh, on the same network as uh, Dan hates everything. Uh, forget. Oh, what is that the exactly hub? Like whatever yeah, it's called. That's it. Yeah. My 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 point about that one is like Dan versus everything was not a children's show. I don't know what no. the fuck they were thinking about that one, but it was not a children's show. But I remember this one. I, I wasn't I, I think after Transformers, the one on Cartoon Network, I dropped out of that. I grew out of it for a while. Mm -hmm. But then I grew back into yeah. Transformers and I got this cool thing. Yeah, yeah. Did I ever show you pictures of this thing? This no. uh, Armada oh. Optimus Prime? Yeah. So they were having a sale like on a website. I was like, huh. I remember having something similar to like when I was a kid. And then I just got into it. I was like, fuck it. Might as well. It's only 200 bucks. And I bought, I bit the bullet yeah. and I bought it. And I'm like, it's a pretty cool statue and figure. It's pretty, uh, what's it called? Pretty uh, movable. Pretty and stick. it has like yeah, the yeah, kind of yeah. sticky joints too. So it works out. Mm -hmm. uh, it'd it be a looks great stop motion cool. project to work on with that. <laughs> yeah, right. Super movable. Yeah. Super adjustable. Yeah, I oh god, I remember taking uh, that in high in college and uh, stop motion and uh, making my own puppet and stuff like that. Uh fuck, man. That's yeah, I, I remember you're like I remember seeing it on oh. your desk. It was like a little like armature wire thing, right? Yeah, and no, then you had a little clay. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you'd start that's with, a nightmare. Uh, yeah, you'd start with uh, wire, and then you would add in like uh, what's it called? Um. Never, well, yeah, you would add in foam. You would add in the stuff to add the muscles and everything for mass. You know what? There's uh, a really, there's actually a really good, uh, uh, there's a really good stop motion channel called I think Animist. Yeah, here we go, and they do like all these like, oh, ads. No, fuck that. No, stop. No. Uh, stop. No. Like the little stop motion stuff right here. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if you ever see this. This is like it was on TikTok and whatnot, but yeah. I've seen it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had, they had like a JoJo one too. Seth Ross shooting Kirby as a basketball. <laughs> Get in there. Yeah, but that that's my little story thing for the for the for the time. Oh, those are great. Yeah. Cause you know it's it's like made for like that kind of thing. Where mm -hmm. 
oh, do I? How do I exit out of this? I think you have to exit out of it. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, uh, how do I? Uh, uh, no. How do I get out of this? Oh no. Do you? Know? I think you just exit. <laughs> you just hit hit exit. All right. Where the hell is the exit? Oh god. Oh god. I'm so. Oh, there we go. You got it. There you go. Okay. There we go. All right. So like. That was that's kind of thing. I should just share my screen next time because I don't want to deal with ads. Ad block. Just that's get ad block on your browser. It's probably the best thing you ever decide for your internet. Um, but yeah, so mm -hmm. like stop motion's hard. Like anyone who does it, round of applause to them. Um, it won an Oscar for uh, Guillermo del Toro, so we're not gonna bash him. Um, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. yeah, it kind of sucks because I, mean, I wanna I wanna talk about movies and film. But I got. I really have to stick to anime right now because of the actors and writers uh, actor strike right now. You know, my I had a lot of a yeah. uh, couple of friends that are in uh, the guild, so I was like, yeah, I probably shouldn't be talking about it on the podcast. So I'm not going to talk about it, but no we'll talk worries. about anime instead. So, yes. have have you seen uh, Zom 100? No, but I've been uh, caught up with JJK. Okay, um, I know. Yeah, and I I saw uh UG versus Choso. And yeah. that was a highlight of my day. I was super happy and I, you know, it's just mm. feels good. Feels good to be a JJK fan. Um because I, and... I caught up to the manga. <laughs> I caught up to the manga and I'm just like, I don't want I don't really feel like how do people like this? I, I feel like people who like like the JJK manga are very, very um masochistic in a way. Because it, it's just at that at this point, it's like who's really left alive? <laughs> Spoilers, but yeah, right. It it's at this point. I don't see how. I'm assuming this is the final. This has to be it because there's no way. I mean, good riddance. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna get hate comments. Like, how do you dare you say JJK sucks? You know, I mean, it is what it is. But I mean, you know. He like hey guys he likes Boruto so you know so he's a weird no uh, no I like the manga Boruto I don't like the anime Boruto that's different the manga one's different because the manga one just picked up again and it's got like a couple more yeah. chapters and I'm like mm, it's getting interesting post time skip I think I think he really just wants to wrap it up and get it done with because I remember at first it started off with the original uh original original mangaka mm -hmm. uh with Kishimoto right. And then he yeah. left to work on Hachi Hachi Eight, which was his like samurai space samurai one yeah. that got axed quickly. And then he took back mm. over Boruto, so I was like, oh, maybe it's written by him now. It's it's gotten better per se. Definitely, you see like a different tone overall. So I think yeah. it, it, people who go back to Boruto like just read the manga, don't watch the anime. Yeah, exactly. Just don't don't worry about it. Yeah, just don't uh, worry about it. Know, I'm always I'm a diehard manga reader, so you know it is what yeah. it is. But uh, you know, occasionally, like I really don't watch anime that often. It's between JJK and uh, Made in Abyss that I'm watching right now. Made in Abyss is Made in Abyss. I'm Made in Abyss. I'm taking my time with, um, and I'm enjoying it. I I really do like exploration and adventure. I mean, hey, adventure. Fan. You know, so I would say that I'm a definitely big fan of those types yeah. of stories. Um and it's cool. I, I I really like the concept. I think the world is beautiful. I tried reading the manga first. Uh, I just didn't. It just it's not um, there. You know, it it gets a while. There. Yeah, yeah. It's just got that style that I. It's just. Mm. Yeah, the it, manga it, 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 and the anime are different. Yeah, the anime like takes out a lot of the fluff that was not necessary. Uh, and I'm glad they did. Yeah, because yeah. it's a way better paced and uh, very happy about that. Um. But I actually, when we were talking about time skip, I had a thought just now. But do shonen anime like really need time skips? I mean, like, it just feels um, like it's a, it's a lot a, of series. It's just a plot just writing device at the end of the day. You know, it's like yeah, a lot a lot of times time skips don't have to be that large because One Piece's time skip was two years. Boruto's time skips like maybe three, I believe at least, because he's definitely older. Um, but yeah, it's, you don't see it a lot per se in Shonen because a lot of times, because Shonen is a, is a demographic, right? You have to think about like what it really is. Cause a lot of times the martial arts and action stuff. Yeah. You have to do time skips. You got to show the training arc and whatnot. That's a bit different. But like when you look at sh like Isekai series, that are so somewhat Shonen-esque, they don't really have time skips. Yeah. 
if that makes sense. Well, because the characters, the characters are usually already at the height. Thing, of exactly. So yeah. Really it's like we're going through the journey. Like I don't even think there was a time skip for um, jobless reincarnation uh, yet. Uh, there is one later on, but like we don't get to that part like until I think third season. I don't. I don't remember. Yeah, close enough. I mean, uh, I've been reading it, so I know that there is, you know, a big one coming up. But yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it happens, and yeah. uh, I will say, like, um, I mean, I've I've read it so many times, but I'm just like, I I really want the the light, or really want the manga to catch up with the light novel, but. Uh, that's gonna take a while because they're they're crawling at a snail's pace right now for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah, well, that and the sentence of a bookworm. I'm just like, please. please yeah, just update it. That, and that's that's the thing too. Just like, if so, here's the thing: if you're a dedicated reader who does like the weekly chapter read, it's it's a snail's pace. But like, if you just read the volumes or just bulk read it every once in a while, you're fine in terms mm -hmm. of um, just kind of pacing. Because a lot, a lot of times, right, we're so involved with these kind of binge reading, binge watching kind of things. We don't really have much going on. And like you, you watch, you can binge watch a show while you do other things. It's like at work, I'll during my break, I'll just kind of watch a couple episodes of one. Ooh, sorry, just a couple episodes yeah. of One Piece at the end of the day. You know, like I'll, I'm currently going through that. I'm up to uh, Alabasta right now. But like One Piece is one of those shows where it's like maybe 15 minutes of actual content and like six minutes of recap and flashbacks you know mm -hmm. yeah yeah so yeah so it's it's kind of the mentality of like if you're binge watcher yeah and being up to date on everything is not gonna be your style you know so just kind of be patient and like maybe pick it up and read it like every three months or so yeah but the tricky part about that is you just got to be careful of spoilers and uh, stuff like that because you just got to stay off social media at that point because people will constantly, you know, yeah, just... Yeah, but here's the thing, though. Like, I, I, like, I don't go on Twitter a lot, but I have a Twitter account. I don't really see spoilers on there. And, like, even on my no. TikTok, I'm not really getting spoilers for a lot of stuff. Like, maybe JJK mm -hmm. and that forces me to go read whatever they're posting about. But a lot of times, you just got to, like, they're posting about stuff that's already been ha already happened, like maybe a month ago, and it's appearing in my feed now. Well, the problem I think comes from also like YouTube as well. I feel like YouTube is the main thing because people will post a thumbnail and that will just instantly be like, "Oh, the the okay. soy jack face going." Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> like new form for this character, and you're like, "What? Blank died? What?" Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Like, if because here, here's the way I feel about it, right? I don't follow YouTubers like that because I think anime YouTubers are probably the most annoying YouTuber on the planet. You know? Shout out to Trash Case. Yeah. Oh, they, they really, well, here, well, here's really the thing. I'll say this because it's all opinion, uh, opinion, uh, opinions, right? Like, they're very, there's very little, like, Trash Case is, like, probably the only one, only one podcast that I actually would say, like, yeah, they do their research and, like, actually know their shit. But a lot of times, it's all the secondhand information I'm getting from, like, boards and, like, other stuff, you know, where it's like, oh, this person said this on Twitter, blah, blah, blah. It's all secondhand information that's not really coming from, one, the company A, a or B, like, an artist or animator themselves. Because I know Trash Chase does, like, the whole entire guess, like, oh, this guy directed this, this, and this, and then they'll bring him on. Stuff like that, because they have connections to whatever, Kotokawa, I believe, so which is, like, another uh, publisher. So they have connections. Like a lot of American anime YouTubers are kind of just like, watch this. This sucks. Blah blah blah. And I'm like, well, you're kind of forgetting about the whole entire production pipeline over here, buddy. And like, you're kind of ignoring the main fact that these are rushed on a weekly schedule. Like you, you sit down for maybe hour to read something off your off your monitor to thousands and thousands of people that will probably for overshadow the original like viewership of the whatever you're talking about you know it's kind of like your opinions really are your opinions and youtube's just a platform for them to explain why and it just doesn't help yeah does that make sense yeah yeah i i, I agree with you i think that um 
in this day and age when you look at something you really just have to especially you know current world events you have to look at it from multiple points of view and i, I mean it's because every it's you can't really take what anyone says as gospel and you shouldn't to be honest with you because and that's you just, the problem with like anime fans in general too it's like they'll just take your word for it at a at a glance and they won't yeah, do their exactly. own investigation blah 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 which is kind of like you are you are just kind of two brain cells working together right now, buddy. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's always good to just, you know, have a good wide net to, like, research and understand, like, hear everyone's argument and try to uh, do research yourself instead of just, like, watching someone's video and yeah, exactly. not even trying to investigate further. But, yeah, you know, it's just... It is how it is nowadays. People always just like to be like, "Oh, this is trash because I don't like it," you know. Or, you know. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's, it's like I don't, I don't like this, so therefore it is bad. When it's like not made yeah. for de your demographic, nor like your actual like age group. At the end of the day, you know, it's like you probably watched this on Crunchyroll or Funimation because it was just there for you. You know, it was recommended by their algorithm. The algorithm. Charlie. I always get scared. I I swear, bro. I look up of something online like Amazon, whatever, like that, and then the next moment I go on YouTube and it's like, hey, check this out. I made this, this, and I'm like, I just fucking looked at that on well, Amazon. Well, what the well fuck? here's the thing. You look it up. You looked up. You looked up in Google, right? First, and then you put Amazon yeah. at the end, right? That's why, because Google and YouTube could talk talk to each other. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That that's uh, something that they typically do. So if you just if right. I bookmark Amazon and I make sure like. I would I search through their their ingest because I know yeah, yeah. like it's gonna be products feed like check this out One Piece TCG Bandai TCG here's Gunpla and whatnot I'm like eh, no thank you I already spent too much money on this crap <laughs> <laughs> Why are you trying to make me go broke YouTube What the fuck Exactly <laughs> it's a, it's it's all a scheme It's a scheme to get your money What the money. heck YouTube Yeah. Well, yeah. it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, you have to make your ad revenue anyway. And a lot of the ads you click on, right, YouTube gets a, or YouTube, Google, whatever, gets a, gets a bit of that, you know? Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day, all, um, the, all these little ads that you click on, they have trackers in them that kind of pay out at the end of the day, which is kind of interesting in my mind. And what's funny to me is that the guy who invented the pop-up ad regrets his decision and it says, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. <laughs> yeah, I am death. I am death, destroyer of worlds. I have, I still haven't seen the movie yet. Um, I I'll saw it. Know. It's it's a three hour slog. I don't, I don't know the, I don't know why people like those kind of Christopher Nolan films. Because it's not necessarily like Christopher Batman, Christopher Nolan's Batman. You know, where it's like, ooh, it's cool. It's like. It's more of like kind of this biopic drama documentary kind of thing to it. And I'm like, okay, yeah, sure. But it's like, well, it's if you don't like history, stuff. skip it. If you don't like history, skip it. Okay. Uh, maybe I'll watch it if I'm on a flight or uh, if it pops up on streaming somewhere. Yeah, that's uh, that's an airplane movie for sure. Like like yeah. like Christopher Nolan intended in, in like a 12-inch screen on the back of someone's <laughs> plane seat. <laughs> yeah right the 75 millimeter just gets transferred to tiny screen. yeah it, it but tiny. here's the thing though it's kind of like well you made a movie right people who are like christopher nolan fanboys are gonna see it anyway so it's like you don't have to listen to me like i said before it's my opinion but like for the general public if you don't like history just don't watch it because it is just like uh whatever not season milan season milan's the um dog whisper it's um is his name Casper? I forgot his name. It started with a C. It started with a C. I forgot the main the main privilege Opp Oppenheimer. It's it's like it's a it's a very much of like it's very dramatic and more like a biopic kind of drama to it. Mm -hmm. And I'm just kind of like sitting here. If you don't like history, you're not gonna really care about it. It's like yeah, they drop the bombs on on uh, Nagasaki and Hiroshima. It's like yeah. That's it. That's yeah. pretty much it. You know, it's like I didn't really need to see people die. You know, right? Exactly. It's, it's kind of just like yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, you play any games recently? Anything I got back into Street Fighter. I got back into Street oh. Fighter. I played Aki. Uh, it's okay. It's like, it's like a, it basically is Fang 2.0 because he does appear in the game and the overworld and whatnot, but it is, it's Fang 2.0. There's not really much that you can really do with her right now. There's nothing really crazy, stuff like that. A lot of the her, her like kind of videos are kind of like mid. I don't think she's gonna be that big of a she's that big of a character. Um, but I think Ak Akuma and um, the other one, the uh, Neo Shadowloo guy, is gonna be big because we haven't seen oh, any update. Yeah, Ed, we haven't seen major updates from him since five. You know, because like we kind of yeah. already saw from the trailer like oh Aki was just see the poison user now and I'm like yeah makes sense not gonna not gonna bat an eyelash at that but yeah. yeah played that uh played a little bit more of Resident Evil 4 at VR have not made it to the ending yet because I just get motion sick that's the only thing but yeah, yeah. And I'll say this oh a new game did come out for VR though it's called um it's a, it's a little sushi like VR game like, it's like a daily oh. life thing. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot about this. It's out Sushi Ben or something like that. And, um, yeah, I I remember oh. looking, like, I follow the guy's TikTok account. So it's like, yeah, he did, he, for, for the past three oh. years of development, it's, it's been pretty good. But it's only a MetaQuest store right now. I'm waiting for mm -hmm. the Steam to drop it because I want to keep all my games in one place, you know? The reason why mm -hmm. I bought them at a HeadQuest was to save money on the uh, VR front, you know? Yeah, yeah, not spend at all. <laughs> not spend at all, yeah. Because here's the thing. Like, for what it's worth, the Oculus is a great, great item. I highly re recommend you getting the two or three, but, like, some of the games are kind of mid at best, and, like, a lot of the good VR games are on Steam, you know? Yeah. I mean, a lot of... I think, you know, still early for VR, but I think it's gotten... <laughs> No, I don't, I don't think it's early for VR. I think VR, it's even... It's, it's probably at its peak right now really? in terms of like general usability. This is the peak of VR. I'm calling it now. It's the peak of VR. In the next couple of years, you'll probably get something more similar to like like the Apple Apple's doing. Because once mm -hmm. Apple gets the technology down, it's going to be better. Quotation marks, better. Right. Um, but yeah, it's not going to be that great because it's just the stuff that we have isn't there yet. And plus like all that kind of stuff requires different peripherals too. So it's kind of like you're spending more money on that. So like, you kind of have to find that kind of budget. It's kind of streamlined because like, because here's the thing, like if you want something to be successful, you make it cheap, you make it extremely useful, you know, like quest two, quest three, they're extremely cheap. They're probably one of the best for this price points as well as are really great tools and the quest three has a pastor where you can just do whatever you're doing where where your headset and do basic chores so there's cameras in the front can't see me yeah but yeah but go? that's the thing though it's like if you want you want something to do well you make it cheap and you make it community based that's how pc gaming got big in the first place because there's a lot of the like, community driving like this kind of stuff and then you kind of have the rise of like linus tech tips and like Gamers Nexus, you know, but like the well, a couple of people were like existing in the t industry before, but like you know what I'm getting at, right? Where it's like it's yeah. more of the community who drives the technology, and then the companies listen and they start updating it that way, you know? Yeah, there's a whole society around it, there's a whole child community. Yeah. It's like one of those, oh, it's like, like a chicken or egg question. Does like the technology shape the society or does the society shape the technology? Which I'm more for of the society shapes the technology technology because a lot of people have really good ideas because like people the apple air talk really great invention really really solid it's a great way to do it but people misuse it they have stalker stuff like that you know it's kind of like people would use air tags to stalk people and it's kind of like yeah well it's not the intended use of the product it's just one of those ways and apple have, has tried to stop the stalking cases but like it's if as it's one of those things where it's like it's up. It's really the user who really is misusing technology for its original purpose, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it brings up new problems, and uh, I think that society, like you're saying, uh, sort of provides new questions for a product that originally was addressed to answer one problem, but now it's like five more pop up, or it's like, yeah, well, exactly. how do we deal with this? You know. So I think you are. I think I agree with you on that. Where it's like, the society itself determines what we put out. Society and society. Yeah. Um, 
you know, pain. Um, yeah, I mean, from my end, I, I've also been playing Resident Evil, but I've been playing the first one. Uh, Which one? First, number one. Oh. Like, Resident Evil. Done. Oh, uh, no you're playing, one. are you playing, like, the remake one from, like, Four's Engine, or? Uh, I'm playing the, uh, it's, like, the remastered. Yeah, that's, that's uh, the remake one. Yeah. Uh, do you know, I, yeah. cause here's the thing. I think it's Resident something. Evil. No, 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 no. It's, it's like, I remember in those games, you still had to deal with the frickin', uh, tape writer ribbons. So I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm kind of like, well, that's just kind of shitty on Capcom's part because the save, the save ribbons inside the original game were just because the system couldn't handle it. But like, at this point, like you just create a system where you just save, just save checkpoint, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think that for the time and the limitations that they had, it was a pretty creative because I feel that uh, survival horror games, like with Resident Evil, like people usually only see the horror, but they forget that it is survival. You have to survive. You have to manage your inventory you have to yeah, manage craft how much items. hold you have to craft and i feel like this game really hampers home the idea of the survival aspect less so than the horror the horror comes in with the uh Jammies. control scheme and the cameras yeah like, both of those like uh, fighting the first zombie i'm like oh i see if you play this as a kid you're gonna lose your shit because there's no fucking way you're going to be able to manage this because now you're going from room to room and you don't know where the zombie is and you have to position yourself in just the right spot to shoot him. And it's a real pain in the ass. Um, but I do find it creative and I feel like it's in the same vein as like when you're reading Dracula and with Dracula, it's portrayed through letters and um, the multiple perspectives. And it's a very interesting way to portray it much like this game is um but i do i will admit i am glad that we've now moved away from that and we don't have to deal with it as much and the ink ribbon thing i mean i feel like if you could have the ability to toggle it on or off that'd be cool i'm yeah. always a fan of having the ability of just being like okay do you want to play with this or do you not want to play with this because no, like, that's, that's the thing that's... it's like that should be like a hard mode option you know where it's like okay yeah. Easy is just kind of like, yeah, you get unlimited saves, blah, blah, blah. Normal, you get unlimited saves, but hard is like you get, you need save ribbons to like do it and whatnot, you know? Yeah, like, exactly. And I remember like the original one did not have a good like uh, level scaling. So it's like either you played it on normal or hard, and that was it, I think. Mm hmm. There's no such thing as easy. It's kind of like uh, Moss Hunter in a sense that there's really one kind of main way to play it, but with the it's like there's you know i'm playing it on oh. hard right now so it's definitely like i'm only gonna play it once so i might as well play it on the hardest difficulty and just get it done with <laughs> well but, no um, yeah well like monster Hunter's kind of the things where it's like it's it's a skill level too where it's like there's a bit more reaction timing involved with your like kind of plan and like builds and whatnot at the end yeah. of the day right it's like a lot of that kind of stuff is is just like not it's like, okay, yeah, you could die, but like there's really no consequence besides you losing some money, you know? But like that could be yeah, easy no, re recurrable at the end of the day, which is like you just get better. Yeah, it's pretty much like did you complete the mission? No. Okay. No real hard loss. Like yeah. you still have the you've made along the way. It's not like you, oh, forgot to save and then you lose all your progress for the past. Yeah, four exactly. Hours. Uh, I haven't played Monster Hunter in a while. I just don't think I'm ready to go back to that kind of grind fest. Cause like it's great when it first comes out and it gives you something to do, but it's like I'm at the point of my lifespan where it's kind of like I don't really want to play games. You know, it's like I don't need to play video games. It's like it's nice to have, but like I rather be out with people. You know, I'm, I feel like that's kind of the thing. I ebb and flow with that at times. I feel like, uh, for instance, like aside from Resident Evil, playing like Sky Factory Four, or Minecraft, and that's just been like a a nice pastime to just like relax work on you know like a little like uh it's minecraft you know you come visit it for a while and you leave you know there's really yeah. that's what's the beauty of it uh and that for me it's like if i'm not doing anything that day it's great just a little like distraction for a bit uh but i still haven't really lost it but i do feel you like i have times where i'm like 
God, I just don't want to play no video games. Fucking, I, you know, I have no interest in playing this or this. I'm a, I try like Baldur's Gate. Like I play it for a bit. And I'm like, okay. I play it for like an hour. Like, all right, cool. And I, I just like, all right. And it's just such a big game. And I'm like, oh fucking. Now here's here's uh, the thing about that, right? Here's the thing about that. Do you think that you've grown either matured out of video games or to our brain spans are just so small we don't have the capability to pl- sit down and play long form games anymore i think it's the it's the latter yeah honestly okay. yeah because like i don't know what it is but i uh i just watch something for a bit and i just start to like fade off and i'm like uh i like but what's great about like playing Right, Minecraft right now, it's like I'll have like a certain set of goals, and it's great because I could just do them off in rapid succession, and then I could be like, okay, done for now, move on. Yeah. Uh, but with Baldur's Gate, it's like, okay, we got it's an ongoing storyline. You got to follow all the way yeah. there, and the whole story takes me all where. I, I mean, like you yeah. could pause it any time, you could save, no problem. But it's like it wouldn't feel like you know, like right if you just didn't finish the thing you wanted to finish and the yeah, problem is then it's, it's like, like one quest at a time you bump you bump into a random npc and they're like hey can you help me out with this and you're like oh okay and then you sorry about that uh you uh you know you then it like get sidetracked with something else and then it's like you start to get overwhelmed again yeah um but i, I i'm not saying in any way that this game is bad for that it is so awesome i love playing with my brother uh, it's great because it's like I don't play D and D. I I don't really have a large group. I mean, I do have like a plenty of friends, but uh, due to our scheduling and usually yeah, it's just like everybody else like, is just like not able to work on your time. Yeah, so this is an excellent substitute. I mean, obviously, if they have the money for it, yeah, great. If not, I'm not gonna pressure them into buying yeah. it. But it's been great because this has just been a game I love to play with my brother for the most part, and yeah. uh, I I do agree that it's like attention spans i don't know i don't know if it's from like just on youtube all the time with shorts or if it's something else i don't don't know know. it's just kind of like i just don't have the patience anymore it's because like i feel like the way game development has gone it's kind of just like yeah but like the reward reception part of your brain it's kind of like it's too long of a goal (laughs) but yeah i feel like games nowadays aside from how do I say this? I think the game, well, the type of games I love nowadays, most of all, is roguelikes. Yeah. Uh, I Hades. Because uh, they're quick. They're, and, they're, they're, you do some, some stuff, feel appreciated that you did something, and then leave. Because here's the thing, yeah. like, Genshin. Genshin is a really bad, uh, like, it's very mm-hmm. basic RPG where it's like, you go on fetch quests every day. No matter for your dailies, yeah. you it's a fetch quest, no matter what. So it's like I just don't like fetch quests. And I think that's the thing, is like the little rewards aren't enough for the work, you know? The little mm-hmm. the little effort the effort to the effort to reward graph is not going up, it's going down, you know? Yeah. Where it's like you gotta have to it's... get the little bell curve going. Right. And it just eventually plateaus and you're just like, fuck, man. Exactly. It's kind of like it's constant like, yeah uh, and that's and that's what i felt with it at uh, towards the end of it when i got to the after the story and i'm just like oh well okay i'm done <laughs> you know i had my fu- i had fun with it but yeah. i've just you know because here's the thing point, like, it's like i don't i, I haven't I'm, i don't because you can't see the numbers on genshin technically you have to go like online look at like to take, to take like server pictures or like whatever like maybe like a week ago or like a couple of days ago, you know, because you can't really actually predict like player numbers. But like the only my my only thing about Genshin is like the only reason like these games survive is the hardcore players, the hardcore weeaboo men and the hardcore like K-pop girlies that like these games just because they have cute anime boys, you know, like, that's the only thing. I think they're... I think there is a charm to the game. I, I'm, you know, I think there, I think there is like aside from those two you mentioned, I think you know there is a general community around it that do enjoy it quite a bit. I can see it, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's an investment. It's it's, it's an investment. Really. It's an investment. Yeah. Everything, I, dude. I swear, bro. I'll, almost uh, that's the, that's like a lot of games nowadays are just 
investments like Sea of Thieves is an investment. Yeah. Halo is an investment. Black Ops is an investment. It's the battle Every pass, big, Charlie. Your triple A thing is an investment. And some companies are good with it. Like No Man's Sky is good with it. I mean, I, I mentioned it before. Sea of Thieves is they update it. I mean, it's yeah, not they, big they update, major updates every once in a while. But they they do they do it. They support it. But the thing with that is is right. I mean, if you don't, that's another thing with the attention span thing. It's like if I'm not getting updates on a regular basis, yeah. quick enough, I just start to lose interest. Then I'm like, all right, you know, just fade away. And, and that's and, and I that's feel like. And, then, and that's why, like, it's one of those things where it's kind of like your reward base isn't isn't there, you know? It's like there's nothing new about it. There's something. There's no reason for me to play to after a certain point, you know? Because like, if it's, yeah. if if they were giving out like primo gems like every other day, like yeah, maybe they would pe- more people would play it and stuff like that. But they don't, so yeah, it's tough because when you have to ask your players after going through a whole campaign type deal, and you've played for like. I don't know, 10 hours or something. And then you look at, you beat like the main story or whatever, and you look at all the stuff left you have to do. And then you realize the grind and you realize how long the grind takes to get exactly what you want. And you're just like, yeah, you're like, it was, bit, it was like that with me uh, and dark tide. Uh, so there's a game that's out. It's called Warhammer 40k Dark Tide. Yeah. It's gotten a big update. They've gotten like a bunch of stuff. But the problem is with that game, when I first played it, I was so into it. The gameplay's great. I love the the universe of Warhammer. So fun. Love it. It's great. Uh, I get I completely level up my first character, and I'm I had fun. It was really good, and I played it for like seven six hours something like that. I'm like okay cool, and then I like go to do my next character and then i realized just it takes forever to do it all over again yeah the gameplay loop is just so slow to build up again yeah and the gameplay is not really kicking as hard and the story's non-existent and it feels like i'm playing the same thing over and over and over again and i'm like oh my god you know uh But then there are games that are able to sort of subvert that. And I mean, like roguelikes, like they do a great job of keeping your interest of being like, okay, one more go around, you know, like for instance, is Deep Rock Galactic a roguelike? I'm pretty sure it is, right? Uh, It's an RNG based. I I would say, yeah, I'd say it's like it falls into the category you know, like how it's it's kind of the broad dynamic of like how what well, what makes a Dark Souls game. You know, yeah, it's like one of those like broad categories. I was like, yeah, it fits into it because like every round's different. It's like Risk of Rain, like every round is different, but it builds off each other. Yeah, so like the point I'm trying to make there is that like like Davis just mentioned is that like Deep Rock Galactic has this awesome feature, genuinely like probably the best thing about it. Is that whenever you load into a new level, the level is entirely different. It's procedurally generated, stuff like that, where it's uh, certain elements are the same, but a lot of it is randomly tweaked depending on the difficulty you run and where you go. Uh, certain elements are the same, but a lot of it's different. And it's really cool. And you can run into different things when you're doing it, um, different enemies, uh, different scenarios and it yeah. just keeps me coming back every single time and it's it's just a genuinely brilliant way yeah. of designing it and i'm not saying that dark tide doesn't have a lot of brilliant ideas but it's just the, the map game design is just kind of bleh it's just the yeah it's the maps mainly i think it's just that uh i'm just running through the same thing over and over again and uh i'm not and also the the rewards i get are just really limited like I yeah. get better weapons and uh, stuff like that, sure. But from the cosmetic standpoint, that's where I'm like, that's really bad because the only way you can get really cool cosmetics is you have to buy it. Uh, you gotta, like, you gotta basically. CS:GO loot box crate that shit. There's a shop that you can purchase the the actual thing you want, like right off the bat. But 
yeah, you got to pay full. You got to pay money for it. And, uh, well, uh, it's well, it's a live service game. That's that's the thing too. You have to yeah. remember that they have to keep servers running for the month. You know. No, yeah, and I and I'll be honest. I I when it started out, I paid for like one or two skins because I wanted to support it, and uh, and I'm glad that they're still updating it to this day, and they're committed, and I and I appreciate Fat Shark for keeping it up. But yeah, it's just. They redid some of the, they redid a bit of cosmetics, but the cosmetics comparatively to what you could have, it's just like, man, can't we have something in between a bit? Because it's like yeah. I get like rags and you guys get like golden uniforms and like cool, like really cool aesthetics. Yeah. And I'm just like with my little brown jacket. <laughs> I don't yeah, know. It's exactly. Like, it's just and I think when it comes to like gameplay and like game development, it's like you kind of have to yeah you have to make your game work around your daily little things you have to do because one game that i keep going back to is called nikkei it's like that little mm -hmm. little like uh phone game like it's a shooter thing where it's like yeah. you get like five characters like you, you just kind of drag and shoot but there's an auto function which makes my life a whole lot easier you just let it run but a lot of, a lot of times right it's like when it comes down to like the daily grind if you make it easy enough for players to do They'll keep coming back no matter what. Like, no matter what, if you make it easy, if it's ease of access, you have actual, like, taking care of it and you know what you're doing and stuff like that. Like, if you make your game around the dailies and make it fun and easy, they're going to keep coming back no matter what, day after day. Because, like, I, I dropped um, the uh, this other game, Cookie Run Kingdom, because I just, the grind was just kind of too much at that point because it was, like, every other week there's, like, a new new thing to grind, stuff like that build x amount of was, stuff and like build build or craft x amount of material stuff like that so it's kind of like there's not much interactivity going on with there but like with the other game nike or nikkei it's like you you were able to like be more interactive with everybody with your characters and like everything it's really well done in my opinion mm. yeah i think i was cookie run kingdom the one where like you play as like gingerbread guys yes and, uh, yeah that was that, uh, the, that was the first game right the oven break or whatever this is like their spinoff game that I think is just way more popular with everybody else because they had a BTS like collab at one point. I was like, oh, oh boy, yeah. It's a cool aesthetic, you know. It's, it's definitely it's, uh, it's definitely fun. a fun game. Don't get me wrong, but like you, once you hit that plateau point, right? There's nothing to bring you back except for the new content. But the new content is just a grind, so it gets kind of yeah. it's more uphill battling, and you don't want to do that again. So you're kind of like, oh, I'm done. Yeah. Same thing with One Piece Treasure Cruise. Yeah. Same it, thing. Yeah. The gotcha game. You know, it's like. Yeah. You know, it is what it is. Like, eventually the grind catches up and you're just like, all right, I'm done for now. I'm done, you know, yeah. like, and like Deep Rock Galactic is the same sort of similar thing. Like, a new season comes out, you grind it for a bit. I will say the grind is a bit easier on Deep Rock because, like, the gameplay loop's just more engaging and because the procedure generated stuff, it's more fun and there's new it's stuff to explore. New. And then they. And they added and they add stuff to it um, constantly. And I am such a big fan. So they what they do is I don't know if they do this for every cosmetic, but uh, basically like there's a cosmetic thing where you can purchase cosmetics in game uh, with in game currency. Um, and what they do is they take over the cosmetics from the battle pass from last season and then put them in there oh uh, so, so it's like if you missed out there. on it you still have a chance before it gets cycled out completely yeah. i just don't know if it's like every cosmetic you could possibly get would be there or if it's just like it's probably like the big ones work. like the big mile markers you know the probably the middle and the end ones those kind of stuff yeah what like, you so, like do. i've only really noticed like big headwear that's the main thing is like because like here's headwear. the thing typically with a battle pass right you if you grind enough you'll get every two battle pass you get the third one for free that's how the system mm -hmm. kind of works. So if you do that, right. you're fine. But it it just doesn't make sense. My computer wants to start restart right now because it's like, oh, you have updates to install. Well, maybe do it's it. uh, that, that's a good stopping point, actually, maybe to let my computer uh, restart. All right. Sure. Give it a break. <laughs> yeah. Give my computer a break because I've been downloading uh, stuff from my drive because my school's getting rid of it. But well, thank mm -hmm. you guys for listening in and we'll catch you guys next time. All right. So see ya. Bye, guys. <laughs>